You're looking at three disappointed people because we just got done seeing Dr. Sleep. I'm just gonna come right out and say it. I hated this film. Everything uh, kind of pissed me off except for my bride, Rebecca Ferguson. I don't know if you guys felt the same way or not. But... Smoke show. I meant about the movie. The movie bad. Bad. always bad. bad too. Yeah. Okay. I didn't read the book. <laughs> Shock shocking. <laughs> Much like I have not read The Shining, and The Shining is one of my favorite thrillers of all time. It's, uh, s the cinematography's brilliant, it holds up, the music's haunting, the acting is phenomenal by everyone except for, uh, the, the woman. <laughs> and even though I couldn't stand Shelley Duvall, it was still really bizarre seeing her replaced in this movie within the first five minutes of the film. Is that a spoiler? No, yeah. I mean, she's, she's not, the, I mean, the actress is replaced. She's not, yeah. I mean, the character, but no. she had a very unique... Very very unique features. So when, <laughs> that's a nice way of saying when it. When she was replaced, it was it was it was very noticeable. Same with Danny, and yeah. other people that are in this. None of the original cast is back, which I, I just I can't get over it. That that alone already dropped it a letter grade right out of the gates. It's like okay, they replace these awesome characters. This is supposed to be a direct sequel. The director who uh, is eluding me, the Mark Flanagan. Mark Flanagan, is that what it was? Sounds about right. Okay, whatever. I don't know what he's done before, but he should stop. <laughs> before I keep bitching, though, was there anything you guys liked about this? Feel free to take your time. Maybe conceptually, it was it was a good idea. Okay. Yeah, you know, following it up. But I don't even know that because, I mean, the, the movie Shining. I mean, it, it wrapped it up nicely. The mysteries and it, well, the, the, you the get end, to think about it a little yeah, bit. The, yeah, and, and that's that's fine to, to end a movie like that. So, I mean, I don't think that anyone was, you know, asking and demanding for a sequel <laughs> no. by any means. You know, visually, the director at some point seemed like he was trying to emulate the original with some of the styles of the shots. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's just not good. It, it, it's not framed well. There, there's a lot of just kind of weird close-ups of cats and things. There's an essential theme as, as far as how it's shot and, you know. Or even a central theme in general. No, yeah, in the script. The better sequel to The Shining was Ready Player One. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Because, you know, Ready Player One had that awesome throwback. Everybody gives... Ready Player One a lot of crap because it's all just nostalgia. It's a big nostalgia movie. Well, that that's what this is. For a good stretch, it's trying to be something new and different, which is what I assume the book mostly is. But then we have a good 30 minutes back at that stupid hotel again. And I'm saying stupid because I now hate it because of this film. And, and Ewan McGregor's just, just casually walking through everything we saw in Ready Player One and in the original movie. And it's so it's just kind of... It's, it's old hat. But the thing, too, is that he, like, somehow knows how everything works and where everything is. Even oh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He was five or six, whatever it was. That might just be the power of the shine, baby. Shine on. Which is another thing to address in this new topsy-turvy world we live in where a superhero movie is born every day. Even these other movies that are more classical have become superhero movies in their own right. It did feel like a superhero movie. Towards the end, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, well, towards, actually. yeah, the, the girl... Um, the, the I guess she's one of the four main protagonists yeah. has the ability, the shining, and um, she has apparently learned how to unlock the force at quite a young <laughs> age. She can do all sorts of wacky stuff that couldn't be done in the first film. Yeah, because in the original, like you said, when we were walking out, it's just he can more or less see things happening and, he can see dead and people. communicate to others mm -hmm. that have the shine. Yeah. That's about it. And in this one, there's... It's super, like, they can cause hallucinations, they can, they can go inside other people's minds, and it's... Well, yeah, and then there's the Shine Hunters, these bandits that, you know, the primary story's on, where they're, they're hunting for kids who have, you know, the, this, yeah. the shine in them, and then they, they kill them and, and take their... Uh, their steam. Their steam. The steam. That, that, they call it the steam. The, but that is the shine, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah it's, there's, it's, a, there's a steam that, that lets yeah. them, it's like a fountain of youth, I guess. I don't know. I didn't like this. I don't like this at all. It's a wreck. I'm giving it a wreck. Yeah, there's no... The, the, the part of The Shining that made it so good was kind of like the mental 
death yeah. that it did to you. You know, you scared yourself more than the movie did. Mm -hmm. This one, it relied on a couple of jumpy scenes, a couple of musical cues and things like that. But it wasn't a, a scary movie, and it wasn't the traditional kind of... No, it wasn't a psychological thriller psych by any means. I, I will say there, there is one scene with, with, a, with a kid, a baseball player, that is really hard to watch. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of shit, and that was really hard to watch. <laughs> they they probably could have just started the scene and then at, and then you know came in at the end. Maybe and, just and we would have been able to kind of get the gist of what they were <laughs> doing, but they they really went into it. Which is, which is where, it's, you know, like Stanley Kubrick is, I think, a little bit more crafty behind the camera. He's mm -hmm. able to tell a story without having to... Actually tell it. Yeah. Go see Dark Fate again. It's a 10 <laughs> out of 10. It's the greatest movie ever. <laughs> it's like a 7 out of 10. Okay? It's a fine movie. It's a fun blockbuster popcorn movie. What were you expecting? There's been four god-awful Terminator films. Well, what did you want? Thanks for watching.